So one of the nice things about having Alex as a part of our course um, is that we get a lot of data about sort of how much time each of you is putting into your Alex study plan, both in phases like we just had in class today with your Alex time in class, but also outside of the classroom. Um, and so what I've done uh, is I've taken that data from the semester and summarized it uh, in the first of the links that you see here on the front of Blackboard. It's called Time Spent Versus Exam Score Activity. So if you jump into that, uh, what you'll see that pops up is a data set. And this data set has as its x values, so as the horizontal coordinates of all the points that we see here on the graph, are how many hours a student, one of you, spent working in their Alex study plan this semester. And the y values in this data set were the score that that student earned on the first exam. Um, let me actually tweak the ranges on this chart a little bit. So for example, um, this first data point in the list, 27, 27, that means that there is some student in this class um, who spent 27 hours working in their Alex study plan over the semester in total as of the time we pulled this data, and that student earned on the first attempt at the exam a score of 27 points. And so that point, 27 comma 27, is one of the points that's plotted here in the graph. Let's see if we can find it. So counting by tens, 10, 20, 30, so 27 is going to be here-ish, and then 10, 20, so that's probably this person. If I click on it, yeah, exactly. So that's that person right there. Um, you may know which one of these data points you are. You may not. You know, if you want to find yourself in this plot, you can, but it doesn't really matter to our, uh, uh, to our activity for today. Because what I'd like to do with this data is understand what is the story behind the scatter plot. Uh, it kind of looks like there's kind of points all over the place, but is, if there's a way for us to extract some meaning from the data that's in this graph, that's something I'd like to do. Uh, so let me just start by asking for your initial impressions. What do you see as a first glance at this data? What can we say about the relationship between the amount of time that a person has spent in their Alex study plan and the score that they got on the first attempt at the exam a few weeks ago? So one of the ways that we might sort of quantify that a little bit is say, well, there are some people in this data that put in roughly the same amount of time in Alex, so between like maybe 24 and 25 hours, all of these test scores here are between, say, 24 and 25, 26, 27 hours in Alex. So about the same amount of time in Alex, but very different exam scores. On the other hand, there are people whose exam scores were similar. So how about this person, this person, and that person? All got scores of around the high 30s, no, sorry, the high 20s. Uh, in Alex, 27s and 28s and 29s, but the amount of time that they spent this semester in Alex is very different, right? So there's quite a bit of variation uh, on both of those dimensions. So this is a messy relationship. It's not clear what individual single story that we can pull out of this data. Um, anything else that you see on this chart that's interesting? So the observation there is that lots of hours doesn't, right, it doesn't automatically, it doesn't always, not for every data point on here, it doesn't always translate to a higher score. For example, um, going back to this person who's at 27, 27, right, how about this data point right here that has more hours spent, it looks like about, uh, 31 or 32 hours, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's this data point right here, 3117. I'll just sort of click on that and see if I can bring up the coordinates of that point. Uh, uh, boop. Yeah, there we go, 31 comma 17. So it's not always the case for every pair of points that I pick on here that having more hours spent in Alex gives you a higher exam score. Um, but it's complicated, right? Because there are some people that did put in more than 27 hours that did have a higher score. So 27, 27 compared to 31, 39, right? So for that pair of points, more hours did correlate to a higher score. Right? So again, it's a messy relationship, and it's complicated. Um, the other thing I've done on this graph is I've shaded in the happy region up here. This is the region of exam scores that are higher than 50, 60, 70, oh, 80, right? Our magic number for the semester. Um, How so, would you say it correlates to a higher 
higher score. I mean, that was the first test. Well, higher, higher relative to the other person, not necessarily oh, okay. higher in time, right? Okay. So um, for this pair of observations, let's say that I'm the one on the left and you're the one on the right, Greg. You had more time spent than I do, and you had a higher exam score than I did. But that's comparing our performance on the same first exam. Uh, once we have more exams under our belt, we can look at how this relationship changes over time. Um, in particular, over time, what's going to happen to all these points? Well, they're all going to drift to the right for sure as you guys spend more and more time working in your ALEC study plan. And we hope that they'll also drift upwards because your exam scores will increase over time. Right? Um, that's generally been true every semester I've taught this course. Um, and then, you know, First one over this line is the first one to pass the course during the semester, right? Um, and the hope is that we get there. So here's a question that we might ask. Um, let me just pick on two data points uh, in this data set, because the whole relationship is really messy. Um, but if we just pick a couple of points, we might be able to pull a story out of it. Let's say, let's say I pick these two. So I have the point 7, 17. 31 comma 39. And so I want to ask the question, if we forget about all the other data and we just take these two data points, I'd like to know, I'm going to write this up here at the top, based on these two data points, how many hours, uh, how many hours should I spend in total to earn my passing score? earn uh, an 80 on the exam. So how in the world could we shed any light on the answer to this question? So what we want to do, what Greg just said, is we want to estimate how much more time, let's say, this person would have to invest. So how much further to the right on this graph would we need to go in order that the score increase enough that we get over this orange line. Um, but just having this one data point is not enough. We need to compare it to the other. Right? So if we believe these two data points are an accurate reflection of the overall trend, which they're probably not, right? but just for the sake of this example, then what we'd like to do is to estimate, to make a prediction of if the trend that begins at this data point and continues through this data point continues past that point, then at what point are we going to cross that line? Right. If I want an 80 on the y-axis, what number do I need on the x-axis? That's really the question here. But in order to do that, we need to actually do the forecasting first. Management business majors prick up your ears. This is, this is forecasting. This is what is meant by forecasting. Um, by taking the data set that we have, the data set that we know, and extrapolating from it, trying to make a prediction that goes beyond the data that's there. And because the order of the day today is linear equations, you might guess that the way we're going to forecast is by drawing a line through these two points, which is the simplest possible assumption that we could make about the relationship between these two quantities. Right? Just take these two points and any two distinct points in the plane determine a unique line. There's only one line I can draw that goes through these two points. And then our goal will be to figure out at what point this line crosses our magic 80. So up here would be somebody who earned an 80 on the exam, and then the only question is, about how many hours did they spend at Alex? Well, what does it look like? Yeah, so if we go down to the y, uh, x-axis and count by tens, this is what it looks like the grid lines are. Here's 50, here's 60, here's 70. So I'm looking at about 75 or so. So again, this is very crude because we've only taken two data points out of this whole data set, and we've asserted that there's maybe a relationship in the whole data set that, that correlates to it. But worrying about the, the probity of this prediction is not what we're here for today. What we're here for today is to figure out how to make this prediction, how to make this prediction accurately, right? and how to use the tools of algebra to make this prediction accurately. Um, because just by reading off a graph, we can only get, as Greg said, an estimate. Right? We get a rough sense here that it's probably about 75 hours. 
ish. But if we want to do better, then we need a tool that's analytical and not just graphical. What we want is we want an equation, y equals something uh, times x plus something. We want some equation that's going to let us use what we know about algebra to analytically solve for the value. Let's say I have an equation for this for the moment. I don't know what it is, but we're going to find it in a second. If I have an equation for this, then what would I do to find the coordinates of this point? Well, which one of the coordinates do I know for sure? I know that if I want to pass, I want my exam score, which is my y coordinate, I know I need that to be 80. What I don't know is I don't know x. So if I had an equation, I would take the number 80, substitute it for my y, and then solve the resulting equation to find x. And we know how to solve an equation with only one variable in it that has only two terms on the one side. Right? That's one of the first things that we learned how to do this semester. So the end game to this process is going to be to substitute 80 into this equation and then solve the result for x. But we can't do that until we have that equation to begin with. So our task, then, is to figure out how, and we'll come back to this specific example again in a little while. Um, first, we want to build the, the nuts and bolts for how to do this process, how to answer that first question of the day. Given two points, how do I find an equation for the line that goes through those two points?